All right, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Uh, welcome to our Design Innovation Month webcast uh, entitled SOLIDWORKS PDM, Collecting Support Information. Uh, on the line today, and our presenter is Courtney Romer. Uh, Courtney is uh, one of our PDM support engineers with our Inflow Technology Group, and she's going to be talking to you today uh, about uh, collecting support information for SOLIDWORKS PDM. Uh, with that, I'm going to kick it over to kick it off over to Courtney uh, again for our SolidWorks PDM collecting support information webcast uh, as part of our Design Innovation Month here at CATI. So, uh, Courtney, uh, the show is yours. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, and thanks for joining me for SolidWorks PDM collecting support information. Um, hopefully, you guys are pretty used to uh, you know the rules of the road when collecting SolidWorks support information. Um, so I'm going to take kind of what you know and spin it towards the PDM side of things. You know, what, what do we need versus what SOLIDWORKS needs and uh, what might we ask you for if you call into tech support uh, with a problem that we need to potentially duplicate on our end in order to troubleshoot and solve. So I want to spend about the next 20 minutes here just talking about uh, the basics of what we look for and what we need to start that troubleshooting process. I want to then review those SOLIDWORKS support tools, uh, some of which you guys are probably very familiar, uh, and how we could utilize some of those SOLIDWORKS tools for the PDM side of things. And then I want to go into SOLIDWORKS PDM specific support tools, uh, what they give, give us in regards to troubleshooting your issues uh, and when we may or may not use those. And then I'd like to jump into a couple Microsoft tools uh, that, again, SOLIDWORKS side utilizes them as well, so we might be a little more familiar. And finally, I just kind of want to round it all off with, you know, what is that SOLIDWORKS PDM environment, uh, and how can we grab certain things from your environment for us to set it up on our end to duplicate your problem and resolve that problem, right, without spending an abundance of time on your guys' physical machines trying to troubleshoot, we can kind of duplicate that environment pretty quickly uh, and, and run through the exact process you guys have uh, to reproduce your issue. So let's start with basic information. Uh, and this stuff is going to be pretty uh, obvious to you guys. You're going to say, well, they ask me this every time I call in. Um, and there's a reason for that. So anytime you call in to whether the SOLIDWORKS line for tech support or the SOLIDWORKS CDM line. Uh, these are basic questions that you're going to be asked right off the bat, you know, beyond what company are you with, what's your name? That way we've got an email and we can communicate accordingly. Uh, then we typically want to ask, okay, so what SOLIDWORKS version are you on? And that's going to include your year and your service pack. What SOLIDWORKS PDM version are you on? Again, including the year and the service pack. And then typically we want to know what operating system you're running. So are you on Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, Windows 10, et cetera. And then on top of that, ideally, you know, we want to know any recent changes that have happened. So you know, is this thing that you're calling about happening out of the blue? Uh, did you recently upgrade, whether that's upgrading a service pack or upgrading to a new major release? And on the SOLIDWORKS PDM science Side specifically, you know, was there a server move? Did we have to back up that server, etc.? And one of the uh, quickest ways to find the version information, as far as a SolidWorks user goes, is if you have SolidWorks open in and of itself. Here, there is a help menu, uh, and in that help menu, you'll see about SolidWorks and about SolidWorks PDM there at the bottom. And both of those windows will pop up to tell you that year and service pack for PDM and uh, SOLIDWORKS. You also have that available in the SOLIDWORKS PDM administration tool. However, it will only list PDM-specific uh, version and service pack for that client. So next, let's roll into that SOLIDWORKS support tool uh, that you are most familiar with. Uh, and this is the big one that you probably hear about a lot, and that's SOLIDWORKS RX. So what is a SOLIDWORKS RX, and what does it bring to the table? Well, for the SOLIDWORKS side of things, it brings a lot to the table. Uh, you can see a list right here on the screenshot just of everything it's wanting to grab, and that includes your system information, SOLIDWORKS specific settings, 
uh, any reports that the SOLIDWORKS RX is going to generate through the process. It's going to grab any crash data during the SOLIDWORKS RX capture. It'll grab any previous performance archives. You can even choose to grab extended logging data. You can grab a video log, the SOLIDWORKS journal, the performance log, application event log, system event log, file access log, and any reliability reports, along with choosing whether or not you want to add style, uh, SOLIDWORKS files um, in which you're experiencing this specific issue. So from the SOLIDWORKS side, all of this is useful. And from the SOLIDWORKS PDM side, about half of this is useful. So none of this information will give us SOLIDWORKS PDM specific uh, data, um, but we will use for instance, that video log, that's very handy uh, for you guys to pop up the data card in front of that and kind of show us what that data card is seeing uh, and, and maybe show the SOLIDWORKS PDM add-in and what that's seeing as far as the data card is concerned. We are also going to utilize that system information. Uh, it does go ahead and grab that application event log, which we're also going to talk about a little later in Microsoft Tools. So even though this doesn't give us PDM specific logs and information, it does have several useful things that the SOLIDWORKS PDM side will utilize. So this may be something that we ask for because it's a nice quick way to bundle that system information, grab a video log of the error occurring in your exact process that you do to duplicate that issue, and it grabs a couple of helpful logs. So let's talk about SOLIDWORKS EDM specific support tools then, and there are a few. The big one is called Collect Support Information, and this just grabs everything we could think of. The only downside to this is you do have to have the actual PDM admin login in order to grab Collect Support Information. So you have to have admin privileges there in PDM to utilize this tool. Where we can find this tool is in that SOLIDWORKS PDM administration. We can log into our vault and right-click on the vault name and choose Collect Support Information. So what all gets bundled in that Collect Support Information, which again, I reiterate, you do have to have admin privileges in order to utilize this tool. So when we first open Collect Support Information, we're going to see uh, five sections here, collect logs and settings, collect archives, create SQL backup, add additional information, and create package. On our initial page here, create collect logs and settings. We could choose to collect archive server log files, database statistics, SOLIDWORKS PDM application version information, the SOLIDWORKS PDM registry section, environment information specific to your SOLIDWORKS PDM, any installed add-ins you guys may be using, and the SOLIDWORKS PDM client log file and the local event logs. So in those cases, right, wherever you're performing the collect support information tool from, that's the local logs that you're going to be pulling into this collect support information. So sometimes you might want to pull it from the client, Depending on the situation, sometimes we might want to pull it from the server. So looking next here, our next option down here in our Collect Support Information menu is Collect Archives. Here we have the option to add specific archive folders or files to our package. This is the relative to the SOLIDWORKS RX grabbing you know, a file set in that RX or grabbing one of those archive file or folders. We can choose to create an SQL backup while we're here and attach that into this Collect Support information. This is a big tool in regards to SOLIDWORKS PDM technical support, being able to duplicate your setup. Uh, that database backup is going to allow us to duplicate that setup, troubleshoot, reproduce on our end to resolve and or potentially create a service request if it is indeed a bug in the software. You can add additional information. 
So here you can choose to add basically a text message of your problem description and any other informative information that you think you should add in regards to the specific issue. And finally, we can create the package. So we're able to create an output path, put it into a zip folder. That way we know where we put it, we can grab it, and send it off to technical support. If you do not have the administrative privileges to use the Collect Support Information tool, our next best thing on that client is to utilize these log files. So same place, right? We want to open up that SOLIDWORKS PDM administration tool. But we don't have to log into anything to utilize the log file. You can just come straight down, double left click on that log file, and it's going to show you all those recent errors. If you want to display a specific error, you can double click that specific event. And a dialog box is going to display showing a description of the event, the date the event occurred, the module and function involved, the event error code, and a description of the error code itself. And you can kind of skip through uh, error by error here in that dialog box. So again, this is local to the machine. So if you're on a client that's having issues, this log file is going to show the errors specific to that client. Uh, and again, if you do not have administrative privileges, this is our next best thing to the collect support information. Next, let's talk about Microsoft Tools. So there's a few tools that both the SOLIDWORKS side likes to use and the PDM uh, technical support side likes to use. And the big one here is the Event Viewer Application Logs. To find those, you want to pull open your Windows Logs, go to the Application section. We then see errors that we can choose to, errors and in information, that we can choose to filter. So I often like to filter for error specific. Uh, and then I will go ahead and save that filtered log out. That way, instead of sitting on the client machine running through uh, errors, if there's potentially quite a few uh, for the specific error in regards to their issue here, uh, we can pull that out, comb through it on our side, and let you get back to work. So let's talk a little bit about the SOLIDWORKS PDM environment what information we're grabbing here to duplicate your environment, and how that communication kind of works. There is a really good analogy that I want to use here when describing our File Vault database versus our SQL or Master database. And that is that the Master database is like a phone book. So similar to how a phone book contains all the numbers associated with houses in a neighborhood, the Master database holds all the metadata for PDM. So it holds a ton of information, but none of the physical files. Whereas the File Vault database is like a neighborhood, right? So similar to how a neighborhood holds all the actual physical houses, the File Vault database holds all the physical files that you have stored in your vault. So these two communicate with each other, and they both need to be backed up in your system regularly. That way, if anything happens, you've got a backup on another server, and we can always restore to that backup, say, if there's a server goes down on you. Um, so again, the master database is really like a phone book. It's just holding information, but none of the physical files, whereas the File Vault database holds the physical files. So if you want to create a database backup of that SQL, of that master database, on your server itself, we have a Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. And here is my screen grab of that on the right here. And how we would take a backup is we want to expand our databases folder. And we're going to right click on the actual vault name. And under Tasks, we're going to choose Backup. And this actually creates a .vak file. So the file itself, again, not, not super large. Uh, it's not as big as you would expect because, again, it's just that metadata. It's just that phone book. Whereas our File Vault database is going to be very big because it's all the physical files. 
Another thing we might ask for is an administrative export file. Uh, there's several options for administrative exports. You could export specific individual components of your vault, whether that be a data card or a specific task, a specific add-in, uh, a specific workflow, and it's going to grab everything necessary to recreate whatever you're exporting so that we could import it in a test environment on our end and kind of duplicate the problem you're having. You can also export the entire vault setup itself. Uh, this is also handy when you want to add a new vault and, and duplicate that same vault setup or maybe start from that same vault setup and kind of modify from there. You can export it out and import it right back into that new vault. So often we ask for the administrative export and the database backup if we're trying to duplicate your system and make sure that we can reproduce your issue in a mimicked environment. That way we can resolve and or process as a bug to get that fix implemented for you. Once you choose the administrative export, it pops up a box as such, and you can see everything it's grabbing with that. So in this case, I chose to just export the entire SolidWorks PDM class vault here, and it defaults to administrative export file one. When we save this, we can always change that. But you can see everything it's grabbing. So it's grabbing the add-in, all the bill materials, any card list, categories. And if I scroll down here, you can see I've got a lot going. If I scroll down, it would be every single section in this vault showcasing every single thing it's grabbing to reproduce the connections from workflow, uh, groups, users, all of their settings, all of those intertwined communications from piece to piece of this vault. So that's a huge chunk of being able to reproduce an environment-specific issue. So if you want to save this out, uh, there is a little Save button right up in the top left where you're going to pop up that Save box and you would be able to choose what you want to name it and where you want to save it at. So kind of to finalize this presentation here, I wanted to talk about a few self-help tools. Uh, Inflow Technology has a PDM technical blog where you can search for all kinds of things, uh, whether you're curious or you're looking for help on something that's happening. Uh, you may be surprised that you're going to find a lot of helpful blogs from our full technical team. We also have uh, the SOLIDWORKS web help for every version of SOLIDWORKS. That also includes SOLIDWORKS PDM web help. This gives you tips and tricks for troubleshooting things, uh, whether that's your tasks, add-ins, uh, content search, kind of a baseline to start. Uh, there's also the SOLIDWORKS tech blog. Uh, same thing. So that's got SOLIDWORKS side, but also PDM side, and you can search for anything relative to your problem, and you may actually find a SOLIDWORKS blog itself in regards to the issue you're experiencing, especially if it is a bug. And then a couple helpful links uh, that I wanted to add here. The SOLIDWORKS PDM Local View Basics and Troubleshooting, that's one of our Inflow Tech blogs. Uh, this is something that happens pretty frequently where people go to remove a local vault view and it doesn't quite get fully removed. So this kind of talks about you know, troubleshooting that and resolving it. Otherwise, call us and we'll do it. <laughs> uh, the last one I wanted to add is the SOLIDWORKS PDM maintenance and backup recommendations from the uh, SOLIDWORKS blog. This is very important, so I like to reiterate, you know, backups, backups, backups. And if you're taking a regular backup, beyond that, if we need one, you can always grab one you already have. So you don't even have to take the time to create a new one. So that is all. Uh, thank you guys for your time, and I think I'm going to jump back to Jim here for any questions. All right. Thanks, Courtney. Great presentation. Well, if no one has any questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you all for joining us. Really do appreciate you for uh, appreciate you taking the time to join us for our DI Month uh, Design Innovation Month webcast. We do have a robust uh, schedule of additional webcasts. So if you haven't uh, uh, haven't registered for uh, for any more topics, you can still go out to the website and register for the. Uh, 
uh, remaining month. We also have a variety of live events as part of our Design Innovation Month as well. Uh, so please go check out the website if there's anything else there that interests you. You know, feel free to sign up. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.